So our first speaker today, or for this panel, is Andrea Giunta. She's a writer and a curator based in Argentina. She's a professor at the University of Buenos Aires and has curated numerous exhibitions, including shows of Leon Ferrari's work, exhibitions about radical women in Latin American art, and the recent Biennale, the 12th Biennial of Mercosul, which was called Feminines, Visualities, Actions, and Effects. So I'd like to invite Andrea Giunta onto the stage. Thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, my topic uh, would be not exactly about Fluxus, but about the constellation around Fluxus. And I will be centered in the work of Esther Ferrer. Esther Ferrer, who is uh, an artist born in San Sebastian, Basque country in Spain, in 1937, the same year in which the city of Guernica was bombed by the German Air Force during the Spanish Civil War before the Second World War. Since 1973, Esther lives in Paris. She was making experimental art in her uh, city um, since 1967 in um, a, an artistic association in Bilbao. Uh, and uh, in um, 1967, she joined a performance group, SAC, that it was formed in Madrid by uh, you have there the list, Ramon Barce, a musician from Madrid, the Canary Island artist Juan Hidalgo, and the Italian Walter Marchetti or Marchetti. Uh, then uh, Sach coordinated very much uh, performances, interventions in spaces and music. Was an extraordinary experimental group that following John Cage's reflections on chants and music, explored performance. It was a group in which Esther performed her own actions, in which she investigated the use, value, and meaning of repetition. With simple methods capable of provoking in the spectator a state of interrogation, Esther emphasizes the simplicity and democratic capacity of the performance. She argues that performance is the most democratic art that exists because to make performance, you only need the will. From there, you invent everything, the technique, the definition, the theory in the case you need it. End of quote. Esther uses simple actions, repeated procedures to create a simple repertoire that allows her to address complex issues. Sach was neither a detachment nor an association with Fluxus, but one of the many simultaneous experiences that in the 60s were inscribed within neo Dadaism, among which Fluxus was also to be found. Of course, there were collaborations. In 1966, Fluxus invited Sach to do joint performances in Europe, and members of Fluxus, such as Alison Knowles and Dick Higgins, also traveled to Spain. There were parallels, but Fluxus, particularly the American line, had a more festive and spectacular tone, while Sach was more restrained. As a Sach artist, Esther Ferrer performed with a cobblestone. She read a text, and I quote here a paragraph. Place a cobblestone in your head, previously marked as a game die. Go out in front of the audience, walk around or not, but in any case, drop it on the floor 
as louder as possible, the better. Bend down, pick it up, say it out loud the number and show it to the audience so that they can check that there is no cheating. Repeat the operation as many times as you wish or until it falls on your foot by chance. In any case, before leaving, leave the cobblestone in the center of the space in case someone wants to repeat the experience." End of quote. This action allows also to understand the humor that characterizes many of the Mr. Ferrer performances. We can say that Sach was close to Fluxus, but it was not Fluxus. It was part of a constellation of experiences that were taking place simultaneously. Esther recently wrote me in an, an exchange of correspondence. She, she wrote, I was a little uneasy that you said that I belong to Fluxus. Even if both I individually and the SAH group are part of the same movement, movements, we never belong to Fluxus group. When Masiunas included SAH in the Fluxus list as the Spanish Fluxus, I think Juan or Walter answered him a bit shockingly, saying that Fluxus was the Spanish Sag. To sum up, although we are on the same path and we have had many contacts as a group or personally with Fluxus artists, we were never members of the group. Although it is true that when we talk about Fluxus, we are often mentioned. I fully agree with Esther with her perspective that considers simultaneity before filiation. In a lecture performance in which Esther referred to Sag and Fluxus that she delivered in 1987, she pointed out that Gudai in Japan in 1955 should be placed in the same line of making an art anti-art. This is why in my recent book, Against the Canon Contemporary Art in a World Without Centers, that unfortunately is in Spanish and Portuguese, but not in English, I refer to the simultaneous avant-garde, breaking the colonial idea of an Euro-American school that dispersed around the world. According to the classical vision, all art happened in a few cities in Europe and in one in the United States. Of course, I am simplifying. And the rest of the world, including Spain, had no choice but to copy a little bit later the inventions, their inventions and geniuses. On the contrary, experimentation was simultaneous and in each scene it had its own names. Fluxus, Gutai, Sag, Vivo Dito in Argentina, Arte No in Chile, and etc., etc., etc. More than analyzing the effect of Fluxus, it would be necessary to analyze the simultaneities of this global experimentation. In this way, we could avoid this centralist view, which understands that artistic innovations are always generator, generated in the centers and then spread to what the centers call peripheries. Although Sag had an international recognition and made several performances in the United States, Sag was not recognized in Spain, in Spain until a retrospective, a retrospective exhibition held in 1996 at the Museo Nacional Centro de Arte Reina Sofia in Madrid. Between 1964 and 1973, Sag carried out an intense action of concerts, performances, publications, installations, and postcards. Esther made her first performance in 1965, and since then, ephemeral actions have been one of the main themes in her work. For her, what happened in a performance is not a representation, 
it is a real event that allows the spectator to take a distance. As we have seen, humor is also playing an important role in her performances. Two of the axes on which Esther has focused on her work are time and space. She has developed the passage of time through her series of self-portraits and uh, also through the performances that she did new since 1975 until recent years. She also proposes a reflection on space, including, including mental space visible in her installations with threads, which are articulated from the walls, and also in her works on prime numbers. This is a fast overview uh, around the diversity of the work of Esther. The chair is a constant element in Esther's work, from her participation in SAG to the present. In several interviews and texts she wrote, uh, Esther refers to the chair as an element that was part of her childhood experiences, a constant element in her life, a unit of meaning. The Sach chair, chair proposes that the viewer sits and stay in the chair until death do them part. The impossibility of the fact introduces again this feature of humor to which we already refer. But the chair was not only the object we see here, but also part of performances and installations such as the, as the action for 36 chairs, 36 shoes, and an alarm clock, which she represent, presented at the Festival Milano Poetry or also the action canon for seven chairs that she presented at the Polyphonic Festival in Marseille in 1990. But let's go now to the issue I am interested in addressing, how this conceptual chair, which intervenes in some performances, takes a feminist turn, which it is, is what I am interested today to analyze. Esther identifies herself as a feminist artist. She regularly developed her arguments through drawing and uh, writing through criticism, but she also did it in some works in which the open meaning was anchored in a precise one, in violence against women. Means that uh, from the sack chair, it was more under, undetermined meaning, but from these installations, uh, it was more direct. She made an installation in 2016, we will see that, focus on the femicides in Spain. And with the same agenda, but uh, activated by femicides in Argentina, Esther's work arrived to Buenos Aires in 2021, when we were just emerging from the pandemic. One of the situations that arose with the confinement of people during the preventive and mandatory social isolation originated by COVID-19 from March 2020 was that many women were locked up with their aggressors the newly created ministry, ministry of Women's Affairs in Argentina implemented fast measures so that victims could move to housing that would protect them from violence. However, during 2020, femicides in Argentina increased. When I invited Esther to exhibit at the Centro Cultural Kirchner in 2021, I was particularly interested in her feminist work. On the one hand, her self-portraits in time. Between 1981 and 2019, Esther made eight self-portraits whose halves she composed in series that, with each self-portrait, increased the possibilities of combinations with each other. 
the intervals between each record are five years and only between 1981 and 1989, she let eight years pass. The Buenos Aires version was um, at the exhibition was the most complete since it included the self portraits uh, until 2019. That this uh, new version was exhibited for the first time and never it was exhibited again. The combination of the self-portraits prompts a comparative reflection on the passage of time. Esther is both the same and different. The series addresses themes that introduce a poetic thought on the aging process, a critique of the model of perpetual youth exaltated by advertising. A central theme in the agenda of feminism that, especially in the present time, prompted an intense debate on intergenerational works and networks. The work with which uh, I would like to conclude this presentation and which trace, traces an arc between this sad moment as uh, simultaneous to fluxus and um, the present is um, this installation with a chair, with a table and a mannequin with, uh, that we, we included in the exhibition. The title of the exhibition in Buenos Aires was When the World Changes. In 2016, in an exhibition at the Centro de Arte Tomás Valiente in Fuenlabrada, Spain, and this is the picture of that installation, and as a reaction to learning about a number of femicides that happened in Spain in 2015, Esther makes an installation in which each empty chair represents a murdered woman, a femicide. The chair, an everyday object, almost anodyne, but, says Esther Ferrer, its mere presence can modify the space can modify the representation of a room." End of quote. Esther is attracted by the anthropomorphic quality of the chair, whatever the material it is made of. In this case, the chairs correspond to the femicides. This is the installation in Buenos Aires that took place in Argentina during 2021. The records of the femicides are recent in Argentina. Probably in many countries, we are not count uh, before the most recent times. And there is a difference between the records of the National Registry of Femicides the, of Argentine Justice and other records, for example, the National Ombudsman Office and the one that is provided by observatories of different NGOs or social organizations. Esther does not appropriate everyday objects to introduce them into art, but introduces art, her way of understanding art, the objects she has worked with all her life into life itself. This is a point of coincidence with the fluxus. This was also a work process that captured the femicides that occurred in Argentina in all this year. The installation was from March, March the 8th, the day that is celebrated at the Women's Day, to the end of this year. And it was a very processual uh, work. Um, when the exhibition opened, as I said, in March 2021, there had been, from the beginning, from January, 77 femicides in Argentina. But the time the exhibition ended in November 2021, the number was 238. If in March, where chairs were inside of the exhibition of the installation space, in November, the chairs came out invading adjacent installations. 
It should be said also that the press was covering the modification of the installation all the time. The sack chair that stripped down, that stripped down, that minimalist object was taken by the artist to a contextual and expansive mobile dimension with which she achieved an extraordinary visual, conceptual, and political intervention involved with feminist activism in Spain and in Argentina. Esther Ferrer has an intense dialogue with simultaneous movements during the 60s and the 70s. She collaborated, she was in dialogue, and at the same time, she was doing her personal work. For example, the Silvia de Chear Sach is an excellent example and an emblematic work by her. Like other post-war artists in the spirit that characterized Fluxus, among them Yoko Ono, Carol Schneeman, or Shigeko Kubota, Esther Ferrer places herself in a group of artists who thought on their works as powerful actions that create an awareness on the situation of women since 1960s. Has this situation changed? As of today, June 14, 2023, when I ended this paper, there have been 116 femicides in Argentina. And it is not only about violence towards women's bodies, towards trans women, towards femicide bodies, as it recently became known through an article published by The Guardian, the place of women in the labor market has worsened in the recent years. Can art intervene in these facts? Esther, Esther's work in Buenos Aires expressed in visual form with an extraordinary powerful image, what is happening in the country. The media, the mass media, the newspapers reproduce the work in its process at different moments. The face-to-face -face educational programs that were activated when isolation began to be less strict gave the work another dimension. The installation created an image to represent a social fact that the newspaper transmitted with figures and photograph, the photographs usually of murdered women alive. In this case, the absence represented by the empty chairs provided a physical and symbolic experience of those lives taken. One chair for any assassinated woman. In this sense, La like Yoko Ono, Schneeman, or Kubota, Esther Ferrer imbued experimentalism with a political dimension that acts in the present. Thank you.